Elmer Bernstein has practiced his craft for the past half century with a highly acclaimed legacy of wide-ranging works. This year marks his 50th anniversary as a film composer who has written the music for more than 200 major film and television scores. It's a year of celebration for Bernstein and the party has just begun. When I look at a film, when I first look at a film, the first question I ask of the film and of myself is, why is there going to be music at all? I mean, what's the music supposed to be doing? Uh, and I have to be able to answer that question. Now, it's different things for different films. The first thing was that I was engaged by the head of the music department at Paramount just to write dances for Cecil B. DeMille, The Ten Commandments. Uh, and uh, when Victor Young, who was supposed to do the score, became ill and felt he couldn't do it, uh, I inherited the film, which was an amazing thing for somebody who had never done a film of that size before. It was, at its time, the most expensive film ever made. In the hiatus between the end of shooting and final scoring of the tones, I did the score for Man with the Golden Arm. I was at my office in Paramount one day, and uh, Cecil DeMille called me down. He said, I want to talk to you. Come down to the office. So I came down to the office, and he said to me, I ran Man with the Golden Arm at my home last night. And I said, I was afraid you might. He said, no, 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 no. He said, it was really, really very good. He said, I really like what you did. He said, don't do anything like that in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> My job, basically, is to create a rail, so to speak, on which the film rides comfortably. In the case, of, let's say, of a film like The Magnificent Seven, uh, the score acts more like a jockey on a horse. In other words, it's a film that was rather slow moving, and the, the score gets on top of the film and drives the film. I think getting typed is very difficult. Now, I've fallen into some problems with that in the past. For instance, uh, when I did the first comedy I did in 1977, which was Animal House, uh, it, it was so successful that everybody wanted me to do comedies. And for 10 years, I couldn't get out of there. Uh, the same thing happened with Westerns. But when I fall into that kind of situation, I will say, no, I won't do that anymore. Music is that art which begins where pictures and words leave off. And because it's not a plastic thing, when you listen to music, you don't say, what does it mean? It's, what does it make you feel? And that's why music is such a great adjunct in, in a film. Because there are very, very few filmmakers that can talk to a composer in the composer's language. Uh, also, it is a very scary process for the filmmaker because the filmmaker has lived with this film for maybe two years, you know, from, from the inception. Now the composer comes along at the very end of the process, and it's pretty scary. And the, it is a really... The, the, the filmmaker has to have faith. Talk about faith. The filmmaker has to have faith because his best chance, or her best chance, of getting what they need is basically to leave the composer alone. And that's a very, very hard thing to do. I, you know, I have heard some composers say that basically they improvise into the machine, you know, so they don't even write notes down. Now, I mean, improvisation is a time-honored art, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not knocking improvisation, but for me, uh, the art of composition 
ha- has to be also an intellectual process, a kind of process where you take time out when you think, when you don't rush right to the piano, when you think, what does the scene really need? And that's an intellectual process. You can't do that improvising. I was in a little village in the middle of Catalonia in Spain, about 80 miles north of Barcelona. And it was, a, it was a bad day because I was looking for some friends I couldn't find. And I sat down outside this cafe and they had one of these horses that you put coins in the children like to ride. And there was this horse next to me and I'm sitting there not feeling very nice. And all of a sudden the horse starts to sing the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> I thought to myself, that's what my life's been about, you know. I'm Elmer Bernstein, in tune with World Beat. <laughs>